I'd now like to call up uh, a great friend of the association, um, all the way from Canada via, well, Sweden via Canada, Professor John Semple, who's going to talk about why do we get ITP. John. Thanks, Marvin. Um, thanks to Adrian and everyone for inviting me. I was here quite a few years ago, but now I'm back and I'm really happy to talk to you about this. Um, so I do, I'm an immunologist and um, these are my disclosures. Um, I hope I'm going to try and teach you why we get ITP and I really hope it's not a horror movie for anyone. So there's three prerequisites in order to become autoimmune and um, the first one is there's probably a genetic component to all autoimmunity. With ITP, we're just starting to break the surface in terms of some of the polymorphisms and the genes associated with it. There's an environmental aspect of autoimmunity in the form of viral infections, bacterial infections, perhaps toxins. And there's, of course, what we call immune dysregulation. And this is the area that I work in primarily. <clears throat> but these really have to come together in order to induce an autoimmune response. Now, immunology is not, an, is not for the faint at heart. It changes daily, um, and it's a difficult science to try and keep track of. So I thought what I would do is try to compare autoimmunity or the immune system to the military, because I think everyone has a reasonable idea of what the military is about. And the immune system has a hierarchy just like the military does. So let's talk about the general of the immune system. And you have to just bear with me with regards to the cells. These are what are called CD4 positive T cells. This general went to the, his military school was the, in the thymus, which is a gland under your breastbone. And he was a top student. He won the best student for recognition of danger, which is mostly foreign antigens. And he was a multitasker. He could do many, many things. Next on the list is the lieutenant, the lieutenant general. These are what are called, uh, these are the markers for them, but these are the T regulatory cells of our immune system. He also went to school in the thymus, and he won best student for peace negotiations, and that's what I'm calling immunosuppression, and civilian safety. He's an anti-autoimmune cell. He's, this cell is the most important cell that keeps us from becoming autoimmune. The next is the kernel. These are the CD8 positive T cells. They're T cells like this, but they're marked with another marker called CD8. They also went to school in the thymus. And this one, he, this fellow won the best student for hand-to-hand -hand enemy destruction. These cells are really important in particularly viral infections. They can destroy virally infected cells, so they really protect us against viral infections. The next one is the captain, of course. These are the B cells. Mark talked to you a little bit about B cells. The, the military school that this cell went, type went to is actually in the bone marrow. This is where they learn not to become autoimmune. But he won the award best student. He was a sniper, and he makes antibodies. So he's really good at making these specific proteins that bind to antigens and can cause clearance of those antigens. And last but not least is the private. These are the macrophages. And the military school that they attended really was the streets. They're everywhere in our body. They surround our blood vessels. They're in our lymph. They're in all our nodes and our spleen. And really, they're specifically trained to eat anything and to warn the general of any kind of danger. So they're like the sentinels of our immune system. They eat and gobble up all sorts of different foreign antigens. And if it's a, a really foreign antigen, they'll get activated and they'll turn on or, or, or tell the general to turn on. So like all armies, soldiers want to fight, and some of them are bad apples, including even the generals and the lieutenant generals. It's the lieutenant generals, the T-Reg's job, to control the aggressive army and at all times so that the innocent civilian, like platelets, are not harmed. So we are all, by nature, autoimmune. We all have autoimmune cells in our body, but only about 7%, 5 to 7% of us will actually get an autoimmune disease. And the main reason why we don't don't all become autoimmune is because of whoops because of the lieutenant generals these T regs they keep our immune system at bay against ourself 
Uh, so CD4 T cells have the ability to react against our cells. This is also true for the CD8 positive T cells, but it's the lieutenant generals or the T regs that suppress um, all of these bad apples. And the innocent civilians, of course, are our platelets. So let's talk about first healthy immunity. What, what goes on in a daily routine in our immune system? And we can talk about it in cent and be cent central to the platelet itself. So during health, we have a platelet that's circulating in our body. And like all cells, platelets have a half-life in our body. In a normal, a healthy individual in humans, it's about 8 to 10 days. And as they, as they get older, or senesce as it's called, they, they change in nature. They get kind of wrinkles about them. They, their carbohydrates change. And this triggers the privates to eat them and to get rid of them because we constantly have to turn them over in a healthy way. And this eating is silent. The macrophages destroy them, but they don't get activated by this process. And this goes on all the time in our body. Even if you're autoimmune, this process is going on. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But, the, of course, the general comes in and he will interrogate the macrophage and, you know, he'll ask the macrophage, am I seeing anything private? And the private, the T-reg, will basically tell the general, no, it's okay, sir, this is a normal process, you don't have to respond to this. So these T-regs are really important because they are what induce a state of self-tolerance, as it's called. They keep us from not reacting against ourselves like platelets. So, so he basically carry on private and he allows the whole process to begin. What about immunity against infections? Because this is really what our immune system has been designed to protect us against is viruses, bacteria, and fungi. So this whole process is still going on. The platelets are getting older and they get normally destroyed by the privates, the macrophages. But all of a sudden, a virus is introduced into the system. This could be in the spleen. The macrophage, because he sees this virus as a foreign entity, eats the virus like he would a platelet, but becomes very activated. They literally get bigger in size and they are really, really activated. And they basically activate and they tell the general there's danger. We have an invader, I've, I've eaten it, I've sensed it, sensed it. and, and the, this, the, the general basically says, I see something bad or dangerous. This uh, a general then will call in recruits. He'll actually call in captains, which are the B cells, and these B cells will generate antibodies against that viral infection. And those antibodies are really important because they very uh, clear the viral infections very quickly. And the virus goes away. But in a lot of times, the virus can come back, even within the same infection. And so if this happens, the captain can call out the colonel, these CD8 positive T cells. And these CD8 positive T cells are really effective at killing virally infected cells. So they really ultimately re remove the virus permanently. And this is how we basically respond to, for example, viral infections. And so once the virus is gone, the macrophage cools down, less activated, and that sort of dampens the immune response and it starts to go back down to a normal um, uh, resting level. But like all generals, it was a great victory. They killed the virus and got rid of it. And of course, generals like to give speeches after they have a great victory in the field. And basically, the general is saying, we will always remember this enemy. And if it returns, we will respond with greater vengeance. This is what's called memory. Our adaptive immune system, the T and B cells, when they encounter dangerous antigens, they remember them. A few of the cells are put off to the side in what's called a memory pool. And if that same infection comes back, the immune system will become really revved up and really um, strong, strongly activated. This is why when we give vaccines to our kids, they always come in for a booster shot. 
They get the first shot that will will um, cause this first reaction to occur. But then a month down or a few months down the road, they get a second shot so that they boost the immune response and increase the memory pool. And that's what protects them against any of the natural occurring infection. So this is infection. This is what we all do, whether you're autoimmune or not. We're very good at getting rid of infections. But what happens in autoimmunity? Why is it that we get autoimmunity? Well, before I tell you about that, I got to say something about the immune system. So you remember the terrible, the, the, I got a terrible secret to tell you, basically. So you remember this fellow. He's the T regulatory cell. Well, he remember his award? It was the best student for peace negotiations, immunosuppression, he turns down the immune response, and civilian safety, it's anti-autoimmunity. Well, he failed his exam and he was expelled from school. He's really not a good T-reg. And, and we know this is true that in autoimmune individuals, whether it's ITP or diabetes mellitus or rheumatoid arthritis, these T regulatory cells are faulty. They don't work. And so that allows these aggressive autoimmune cells to become activated against self-proteins. So the army, in this case, has no real peace negotiators, and the civilians now are at risk. That is, in this case, the platelets. And the, his failure will allow the army to possibly destro destroy indiscriminately. So here we go again with the same scenario. Normally the macrophage or the private is eating the older platelets. Let's say in this case an infection comes around. Well, again, the, the macrophage eats this infection, infection, becomes really activated, but remember now there's no T regs around. These are faulty, they failed their exam. So they say that the macrophage tells the general, there's danger, sir, and the, and the uh, the, the, the general or the CD, the helper cell, um, sees something bad and he calls the captain, the B cells into charge, and they make antibodies against the virus like they normally would. The virus could go away, but the, the, the T so cell also says, I see another enemy, those little guys up in the left top hand corner. And he instructs the B cells to make antibodies against them too. So those antibodies cross react and bind to the platelets and the platelets get destroyed even at a quicker rate because they have an antibody on their surface now. And that's what causes low platelet counts primarily in ITP. We, the same can happen with this infection and the recruitment of the, um, uh, the uh, kernel and the CD8 positive T cells. And we now know that these same cells can bind to platelets and destroy the platelets or go into the bone marrow and destroy megakaryocytes that produce the platelets. So this is really what the, the main aspects of autoimmunity against platelets are. Why you specifically got autoimmunity against your platelets, we still don't know. Why does a, a person with type 1 diabetes get uh, autoimmunity against insulin or the beta cells of, of the pancreas? We don't know how that occurs yet, but we do know that these events are probably occurring within patients with autoimmunity. So. In autoimmune or in patients with ITP, the T-regs, the T these, these really uh, suppressive cells are either missing or faulty. So there's a lack of tolerance that these cells induce. They can't stop the immune system from recognizing self like the platelets. So the B cells can make autoantibodies against the platelets and the CD8 positive T cells can destroy both the platelets and the megakaryocytes in the bone, bone marrow. And it's these two reactions that are the primary cause of low platelet counts in ITP. And I see that I have about seven more minutes, so I'm gonna go through the next 573 slides really quickly, Mervyn, just for you. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> So this is what the ITP pathophysiology looks like. I could have showed you this and gone through it. Um, I talked about it yesterday at the ITP update, Nikki's ITP T update. It's a complex process, but it occurs because the macrophage presents autoantigens to these CD4 positive T cells. They become activated to the platelet autoantigens through this phagocytosis process, and they turn on B cells 
to drive them into making autoantibodies. These autoantibodies then can bind to the platelets and they can destroy the platelets by the macrophage or they can activate complement and destroy the platelets through this way. There's also these CD8 positive T cells that become activated and they can very easily destroy the megakaryocytes in the bone marrow. And a lot of the therapies that you're going to hear about today and I've already hear, heard about today target a lot of these different sites in the pathophysiological uh, process. And, and um, I'll just, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you're going to hear about them, is that a, a variety of these different therapies that I know that you've heard about, in fact, target different aspects of this pathophysiological uh, loop, if you will. The TPO receptors turn on the megakaryocytes to make more platelets. Rituxans wipes out the B cells, so antibodies are, 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 or autoantibodies are reduced. And there's a whole variety of other therapies, even complement inhibition is now starting to be used. And I think Dr. Cooter may talk about some of these um, in, the, in the future. So I'd like to thank you for listening, and I hope I gave you an idea of um, why we get ITP, and it was 15 minutes and 26 seconds, just so you know, just...